So Jesus' death was significant. His burial was significant. They buried him in a public place. Everyone would have known where Jesus was. These 16 Roman soldiers standing outside of his tomb, the tomb sealed with wax and sealed with the signet ring of Caesar. But these Roman soldiers are convincing eyewitnesses of the resurrection. Why is that? Because a Roman soldier asleep on the guard would have been put to death. And the historical records conclude that no one, none of these Roman soldiers were put to death. In fact, they paid people to say that the disciple's body was stolen. Now, another convincing um, evidence that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead are 500 witnesses that had seen Jesus in the land of Judea after he was risen from the dead. And this is referred to in one of the letters by the Apostle Paul. And what he's saying is to these people uh, in the city of Corinth is that there are 500 people that have seen Jesus raised from the dead and he names several others outside of the 500, but 500 specifically that are alive to this day that you can go and interview. Now, the proof of the resurrection and of this statement of these eyewitnesses is that the gospel message that Jesus Christ did rise from the dead after paying for the sins of mankind, the proof of this is that the gospel message spread throughout the Roman Empire um, and people accepted the evidence. They must have interviewed many of these people. Now, another convincing evidence is that some of Jesus' enemies were converted. During Jesus' life, he had some stepbrothers from Joseph and Mary, and they did not care for Jesus during his earthly ministry. But after his earthly ministry and after the resurrection, they were his strongest proponents. Not only that, you had the conversion of one of the chief Pharisees, one of the chief people that were putting people in jail for being Christians. And that was that Paul, who was before called Saul of Tarsus. So another convincing evidence of the resurrection of Jesus is the conversion of Jesus' enemies. Jesus' chief enemy among the Jews was a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was busy locking up Christians, busy putting people in jail who believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Saul of Tarsus was a scholar he was a person who sat at the feet of a philosopher, a Jewish philosopher by the name of Gamaliel. He was recognized in that community and in the Roman world uh, among some, some places. And his conversion was a radical conversion. It's recorded in the scriptures. Not only that, but the great, one of the great evidences of the resurrection is the change in the disciples' behavior. At the crucifixion, the Bible records that the disciples were hiding, they were cowering. And this is what you would expect. Here, a person who claimed to be God was being crucified. Now, this was totally unexpected. And so, they were afraid. But after the resurrection, after they had seen the Lord risen from the dead, they who once were cowering like uh, cowards were as bold as lions. And they went everywhere boldly preaching the gospel. And 12 ignorant fishermen and other professions that were very poor, 11, and then they added Matthias uh, because Judas had... Um, betrayed Jesus, but they had 12 of these men going throughout the Roman Empire proclaiming the resurrection, and it was believed. It was authentic. So, you have the claims of Jesus. You have the uniqueness of his death. You have the uh, amazing evidence of his resurrection. And then you have all 12, and actually 13, if you include Saul of Tarsus, who became known as Paul, 
all of them except for one were martyred. They all died for what they believed. And what was it that drove them? Was it a lie? Was it a lie that Jesus was God? Was it a lie that they believed? Amazing if it was. No, Jesus was either a liar, a lunatic, or he was the Lord of glory. Let me close by leaving you with a quote by a famous British author whose name is C.S. Lewis. He was the author of the Chronicles of Narnia, a well-known, well-respected man. He said something about Jesus that I think we need to take into account. Let me just read the quote to you. He says this, A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says that he is a scrambled egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great moral teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. So I hope that we've answered your question, did Jesus really rise from the dead? If he didn't rise from the dead, there are questions that no one has been able to answer. Why weren't these Roman soldiers put to death? How did the gospel spread through 12 ignorant men and turn the world upside down? So many other questions that we cannot answer. But if Jesus did rise from the dead, then he does have authority over all people, including you and including me. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll look at the next video and check it out. And if you have any other questions, feel free to write us or call us. We'd be glad to answer any question you have. Thank you.